Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We celebrate this weekend our fifth Sunday of Easter. And throughout this Easter season, we are celebrating the good news that Christ, who died and paid the price for our sins, conquering death, rose again from the dead, and still lives. And that means that we should still expect to find Jesus, that Jesus can still surprise us, because Jesus is still alive and active and working in this world in which we live. There are a number of ways that we today meet the risen Christ. One of them is through word and sacrament. When we hear God's word from the scriptures, we believe that Christ is present in our midst. And that's especially true when we read from the gospel accounts, which are the story of Jesus and proclaim the words that he spoke. It's the reason we have a posture change when we read the gospel. Unlike the other scripture lessons that are read when we are seated, we stand for the reading of the gospel because in that gospel lesson, the risen Christ is present with us and we stand to honor him. We see the risen Christ in the sacraments. Christ comes to us in the sacrament of holy baptism, adopts us into his family, washes us clean of our sin, and connects us to his death and resurrection. We die to our old sinful selves, and we are risen to new life in Christ, and we are connected to the life of the risen Christ in that sacrament. And then, of course, when we come to this table to eat the meal, it is the meal where the risen Christ is both our host and also the food that is offered In, with, and under the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, the risen Christ is present among us. But I think there's another very important way that the risen Christ comes to us on a regular basis, and that is through each other. Martin Luther liked to say that we should be little Christ to our neighbors. There are those times when God will use me, and those times when God will use you, to be Christ to another, to a brother and sister who has need. And there have been many times when God has used someone else to be Christ to me. In that relationship that we share with each other, in the fellowship of the church, we experience the risen Christ. And in our gospel reading for this evening, where Jesus is teaching on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus gives us an example of this relationship we share with each other. It's an agricultural example of the vine, the vine grower, and the branches. 
Jesus says that the Father is the, the vine grower and that he, the risen Lord, is the true vine. And all of us who are God's people are the branches. We are connected to the vine. We abide in the vine. We live in relationship with that vine. And when we are connected to that vine, we are nourished and we grow and we bear fruit. If we allow that connection to become broken, we will wither and die and not be able to provide any fruit. Now we are grafted in to this vine through the sacrament of holy baptism. On that day that Christ comes to each of us, calls us by name, adopts us into his family, washes us clean of our sin, he makes us a part of that vine. And we become that vine with all others who were part of that vine. And our first reading for this evening reminds us just how wide a group that is. We read the story of Philip, one of the early evangelists, converting a eunuch from Ethiopia and teaching that eunuch what Jesus was all about to the point that the eunuch sees water and says, I want to be part of this. I want to be baptized. But realize that that eunuch from Ethiopia would have been black, a different race. He was most certainly not a son of Abraham, a Jew by birth. He would have been a Gentile. And then, of course, according to the strict Jewish laws, he was an outcast because he was a eunuch unable to procreate and provide future generations. This man would have been totally looked down upon by just about everybody in the society in which he lived, or at least the society that Philip was a part of. And yet he is welcomed into the vine. He is grafted as a branch of the vine through that sacrament of baptism the same sacrament that has made all of us a part of that vine. And then what is it that makes that vine grow? What is it that makes that vine produce? I think the answer there is love. Because what goes between the father who was the vine grower and the son who was the true vine and what goes between Jesus, who is the true vine, and all of us who are the branches is true love. That agape love that we talk about in the Christian scriptures. A love that we know because God first loved us. We didn't develop this love. We didn't come up with this idea of love. God reached out to us and sent his son to be the sacrifice for us to accept us, to adopt us into his kingdom, even though we were sinners and turned our back on God. God poured out his love upon us in Christ, and he grafts us into the vine, nourishing all the branches with that perfect love. And we are called then to share that love with one another. That second reading from the first letter of John is a treatise on what agape love is all about. And a couple of points really stand out to me. One is that this agape love takes away fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And John says if we still have fear, then we don't really understand love. We haven't really experienced it. You see, the risen Christ has a future. We talk a lot about what Christ did 2,000 years ago in the stories that the Gospels tell. And I'm trying to suggest tonight that the risen Christ is very present in our worlds right now today and that in a number of ways he connects with us through this vine that he invites us to be a part of. But the risen Christ also has a future Death is behind him. He has already died and he has conquered death. And so that there is absolutely nothing that can prevent the future from being what Christ, the risen Christ, intends it to be. And that means if we move ahead into the future, 
We don't have to worry about what's going to happen or how things are going to be because no matter what happens, no matter what is the situation, we won't be alone. The risen Christ will be with us and we will be grafted into the vine that he is. We will be branches nourished in his love. Perfect love casts out fear and we don't have to be afraid of what the future brings. We know that when the end time comes, we will be a part of God's kingdom. And that until then, anything that comes our way, we will not face alone, but in this relationship with the living Christ. We've gone through this time of COVID, and there were months that we could not gather like this in worship. We were part of the vine, but the branches couldn't get together. We had to settle for Zoom or Facebook or YouTube. And even now, we're not quite together the way we would like to be, having to sit at the end of a row, sitting in only every, every, ever, every other row, wearing our mask, not sharing the peace the way we enjoy sharing the peace, and being careful not to do a whole lot of handshaking and hugging in the narthex before and after service. But if COVID did anything, at least for me, it reminded me how important those relationships are that we share with each other that sometimes before COVID, I think maybe I took for granted. This to me, being here in this room together is so much better than just watching on Facebook. And even though we can't be together in the way that we would totally like to be together, we know that that time will come and we'll appreciate those hugs and those handshakes so much more. COVID may have taught us how important it is to be a part of the vine and to share life with our fellow branches. But John concludes that teaching in our second reading with a reminder that we are called to love those other branches and not to pick and choose the ones we think are lovable, not to pick and choose those that are like us and those that we like, but we are to love all those who were branches, including those who were different from us, including those who sometimes rub us the wrong way, including maybe some of those we don't like very much, but they are fellow baptized. They are branches in this vine. And this love that Christ infuses into the vine is a love we need to share with each other. And if we cannot love the brothers and sisters that we see and share a relationship with physically, we really won't be able to love the God who inspired us with this love and nourishes us in this love. Christ is risen, hallelujah. And the risen Christ continues to come and to be present with us each day of our lives, assuring us that the future is in his hand. One of the ways he comes is through the relationship we share in this church, where we are brothers and sisters of one another, because we are brothers and sisters of Christ and children of God the Father. Through baptism, we are grafted into his vine. And as the branches, we are infused and empowered with his love. May our lives truly be love-filled, and may our lives be times of sharing that love with one another. Amen.